good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to be going all the way over to Colorado, Arvada, Colorado, actually, and we're going to be talking with young 18-year-old pro late model driver and super late model driver, Cassidy Hines. Cassidy, how are you doing this evening? I'm good, Rod. How are you? I'm good. Um, so Cassidy, let's just get right into this. Let's talk a little bit about what you've got going on for 2022. I know that you don't have a rate, you haven't raced yet. And your first race is coming up in, I think it's two weekends from this weekend. So you got about three weeks here uh, before you get back into the race car. So share with the viewers a little bit about what's going on with Cassidy and the racing side of things. Yeah, so we're getting off. Our season is kicking off a little bit late this year, um, but I'm starting out in the prolate model in California with Nate Clara Motorsports, and I'm going to be running a super late model here in Colorado at Colorado National Speedway with the Cassidy Hines Racing Team. So I'm really excited for both of those, hoping to get some more experience in them and see what I can achieve this year. So when you let's talk about Nate Clara Motorsports role. Real quick, you've been racing with Mike now for I think this will be your third or fourth year. And the, the Pro Light Model series is is really exploding all over the country. Um, I think in, in a lot of places it's it's actually taking over the super late model side of things. So tell us just how tough is I know you're going to be running SLR and also some nut up pro late models. So Tell us how tough that series actually is. It's really tough. Um, running SRL with Nate Clara Motorsports, it's been pretty fun. We haven't raced as much SRL stuff as we were planning to last season, but the what the some the multiple races that I did race with them for SRL, they were pretty difficult because you have all of these super late model drivers in the SRL series going and racing the pro late models too. And they're so much more experienced than most of the drivers in the pro late models. So it's it's pretty difficult, but I've had fun learning and I'm hoping that we can do a little bit better in them this year because last year wasn't the greatest in the SRL series, but we'll see what we can do. So for the viewers that may not know what the major differences are between a pro late model and a super late model, can you share that with them? Um, yeah, so super late models, they have a bigger engine in them and some of the ride heights and everything in them is different than in pro late models. So super late models are faster and they have more horsepower than a pro late model does. So what about from the braking side of it? I've heard a lot of people talk about, you know, how much better the braking systems are in a super late model and a pro late model. And, and, you know, one of the things that's really strange about the two classes are, is that super late models, on the East Coast and super late models in the Midwest and super late models on the West Coast, they, they may all not still run under the same rule packages. Oh, yeah, a lot of them are different. Um, I do notice that like in Colorado, the super late models here are similar. They have the same rules as the SRL super late models. So I don't really see a difference like breaking wise between the pros and the supers. Um, but then again, I've only ran my super late model once, so it's kind of hard to judge that. But from the one time that I did race it, um, I didn't really see a difference in them. I did notice the horsepower, but that was honestly about it. Well, let's shift a little bit from racing um, and kind of go see who Cassidy Hines is off the track. Now, um, you're in your second year of college. First. First year of college. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so tell us what, what is the difference? You know, I know that you were an honor student and everything in high school. Going to college, you know, for me was a disaster because I didn't know how to study. So I didn't do very well. Um, kind of give us some clues of what, what does your week look like being a full-time college student? Oh man, my week is stressful <laughs> to say the least. It's um, it's a lot of schoolwork, honestly. I'm a full-time student, so it's a lot of credits, um, a lot of classes, and I'm a science major, so all of my classes are pretty much science related. I mean, we have, I have my prereqs, but 
a lot of the classes that I'm taking now are all science. And so it's pretty difficult to manage. And with racing, especially last semester, because I didn't really know the college thing yet, I was studying while I was at the track. I was going from the race car and then jumping out really quick and going to the hauler and writing down notes and doing homework. It was it was a lot of work. And I'm hoping that this semester it can be a little bit more like, I guess, less hectic. Um, but I guess we'll see. <laughs> so, and you know, and I know maybe another thing that you're experiencing is kind of like, I don't, I don't know of a better way to say it, but you were like a big person on campus uh, in your high school. And, and now when you get to, to, to the college level, um, do you find yourself as being like just another person there? And whereas in high school, a lot of your teachers knew that you were a race car driver. And I'm going to guess that in, in, at college, they could probably care less. Maybe yeah, I'm wrong, but. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, they really, they don't. I mean, I tell my professors last semester, I would, I had an exam and I was racing that day. It was on a Thursday and I was like, I'm going to miss the exam. And she's like, well, I'm really sorry to hear that, but I wish you wouldn't. And, you know, so it, it's hard. I mean, they don't, they don't really care. They're like, oh, you miss it. That's okay. Like sucks for you, I guess. So it's, it's difficult, but yeah, high school was definitely different. Um, they did know me. They were more easygoing with that stuff. They weren't as strict about it, but college, I've actually enjoyed college more because I'm there to learn and everybody else is there to learn and we're all adults. So it's not like you go into your classroom and there's a ton of obnoxious teenagers in there with you, not wanting to learn the same thing as you. So I don't know. I've enjoyed it more, even though it's harder. Yeah. Well, keep in mind too, that you know, from a, from a college standpoint, people are paying to go there. Oh yeah. You know, it's not like you had to go, but people were paying there. So there's an investment involved. So I, I think that most kids, most, I know, I know that there's still some that don't, um, you know, when I went to school, I mean, that was all the way back. My freshman year in college was in 1977. And that's a long time ago. And I can remember going to my first class when the professor held up a book and said, what's in this book is your responsibility to learn. I'm not going to cover any of it. You will be tested on it and you will be tested on everything that I lecture on that I think is important. And I think for me, I know this isn't for you, but for me, the worst thing that he could have said was, I don't really care if you come to class or not, you know, um, and, and, and so I took that to heart and I didn't go to class. And like I said, I didn't do very well, but do, do you see a lot of that still happening here? It is, is, is 2022 is the, is the, the system still the same? Um, it's the same, but it's different. Now it's more electronically based. So since COVID happened, all of the professors had to teach online. And so they just recorded all their lectures. And now um, they're basically just telling us that we should watch these three hour lectures on our own time, but then still go to lecture class. And they just won't lecture. They'll just have casual conversations with us. So it's kind of, it's difficult. Plus, we have to do all of the homeworks. Plus, we have the exams. It's it's time consuming. Wow, I'm I'm glad I'm not in school anymore. <laughs> so let, let's shift a little bit outside of uh, what you've got going on in college. Um, you know, there are a lot of young female racers that are out there right now that you know might be even as young as seven, eight years old and racing quarter midgets. And, you know, then, then some that are the 10, 11, the 13, 14 years old, again, they could still be doing quarter midgets or micro sprints. You've kind of been down that path. If you could give them some advice, give them some things to say, hey, here's some of the hurdles that you're going to see, what, what would that advice look like? Oh, man. Um, 
So in my personal experiences with racing, I've noticed that when females succeed in the male dominated sport that it is, we don't get the recognition of our competitors. And being that person, that's really hard to go through because you want to be recognized. You want your competitors to come up to you and say, good job, good job. But at the same time, it's giving you that motivation to do it again because you look at it and you're like, oh, they don't really like it, but I'm enjoying it and I'm winning. So I'm going to do it again. And so I'd say for all of the young female racers out there that they should just keep digging and never let anybody tell them that they can't do anything because if they set their minds to it, they'll be able to do it. So let's back up a little bit. And I'm going to ask this question. Um, do you see that that's really any different when you were a young age racing against the boys until now, you know, being, um, you know, a, a teenager racing against men? Do they still have the same attitude? Um, I think now it's a little bit more prominent than it was when I was in quarter midgets. Um, Cause in quarter midgets, I was still racing against younger kids, like my age and younger. So it wasn't as big of a deal. They would still, I mean, they were my friends. We'd hang out after the races. So they would still be okay with it most of the time. But now it's like you get a quick time and you get out of your truck or your car and all you get is stares. You don't get, hey, good job, good job, congrats. You just get stares and glares. It's it's not fun, but it's also what keeps you going in the long run. I sort of say ever since the first time that I met you um, in Phoenix, I, I feel like that would probably fuel Cassidy Hines. Tell me I can't do something and I'm going to show you how I can. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. So um, we don't have much time left here now. Is there anything else that you think that you could share with? But let's just let's take the 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 male female barriers down. Any young racer who's out there that wants to pursue a career in 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 motorsports, um, how tough is it? I, I know from a financial standpoint that is something that. Every single racer across this country is it, it, it struggles with. Um, and, and again, for, for young racers that are getting involved, you'd think, oh, well, if I run quarter midgets, it's not that expensive. But, but I know teams that, that spent in excess of $300,000 last year quarter midget racing. And then when you get up to the levels that you are now, and especially that next step for Cassidy Hines, that that step in 2023, you know, is probably going to be a very expensive step. Oh, yeah. I mean, racing in general is just, it's difficult in every aspect. Mm -hmm. I mean, financially, it's difficult, but it's also difficult on, like, basically trying to get your name out there. I mean, because now we rely so much on social media that it's social media becomes our lives. And all we can do really is post and post and post and post and try and get our names out there. And I mean, that's difficult, especially when you're busy. And I mean, if you don't do anything on the weekends, you're like, oh, what do I post now? So you go back and you're like, oh, it's time for a flashback day, you know, like it's, it's hard to be in this sport, but if it's what you love, you, you have to do what you got to do to succeed. I mean, that's, that's really all there is to it. I can't really, I don't know. I don't really know how else to respond to it. Well, I, I think that's a, it's a really good answer to be truthful with you. Um, the expense of, of racing is something that they're trying to get a, a handle on. I'm not sure that that's actually working yet, but, but I think in someday that, that, that maybe it can bring that cost of racing down and, you know, then when we have all the things going on like it is right now with fuel prices going up and, you know, travel and hotel rooms and food, even 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 food out there today. I mean, racers are always known for like, 
you know, hey, we're just going to go to the racetrack, we'll dart through some fast food restaurant, go back to the hotel, eat. And, you know, if, if you're feeding a race team on the road and you make a dart through fast foods now, it, it could cost you a hundred bucks. I know Carol and I, we, we make some trips to fast foods and it's like, you know, it's $25. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're at McDonald's. So, oh, yeah. uh, okay. Well, Cassidy, um, I want to thank you for being on uh, Race Face Spotlight with us tonight. We want to wish you all the luck um, heading into the 2022 season. Is there any of your sponsors? And I, I do, I do have one other question. If there is somebody out there watching right now, and maybe they own a company, maybe they're a marketing executive for a company. Tell that person right now why Cassidy Hines would be a good brand ambassador for their product. They would be a good ba brand ambassador for, I would be a good brand ambassador for them because I would rep their products. Um, I'd get their name out there. I'd post, um, I'd do everything that I could to, make them happy and keep them happy. And I think that if they're thinking about it, they should definitely go for it. And I would be all for it. <laughs> and, and I know you've got a couple of, of, you know, brands that you're really passionate about. So I'll just say it, you know, Lululemon, if you're watching, you know, we know that you, you just put an article out there that said you're going after Nike. This could be your girl. And the other one is Buckle because you wear so much of their products. So if you guys are out there watching, you need to get in contact. You need to go to CassidyHinesRacing.com, click out the contact form and, and, and sit down and talk to this young lady. Um, you never know what can happen until a conversation starts. And as we always say, you know, sponsorships and everything, they start by creating a marketing partner. And that starts by starting to build a relationship. So Cassidy, with, with us getting ready to wrap up right now, who are the sponsors you'd like to thank for making things happen for you um, where we are? I'd like to thank Frontier Restoration, Fort Worth Screen Printing, Total Health Solutions, Matco Tools, Commit to Fitness, Nick Clower Motorsports, the Cassidy Hines Racing Team for all their help, um, my parents and my grandparents, and Race Face Brand Development. Well, Cassidy, again, thank you very much. And, and for those of you that are watching, make sure to, like we said, go to her Facebook page, go to her social media platforms, go into her fan zone, get signed up for her newsletter, um, watch for her uh, podcast. She does a podcast every month called uh, Drive and Five with Tom Baker out of uh, Charlotte, North Carolina. And now she's going to be a part of a weekly TV show that's going to be on Racing America's TV channel. Uh, that will that will go out every week. It's in 165 million households. So if you're a brand out there and you're looking for somebody uh, to be a brand ambassador, I think Cassidy would make a great one. And we now have positioned um, these drivers to where they're getting the exposure that you might be looking for. So again, Cassidy, thank you for being with us. Viewers, thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you back here in two weeks for another Race Face Spotlight.